Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and this time out we're going to take a look at a new updated plugin um, from the company Audified called the Mix Checker Pro. Now about, I don't know, six, eight months ago if you search my archive I did um, a full review on the Mix Checker which looks very similar to this. Um, great plugin, great for checking your mixes against different uh, studio or different listening environments so you don't have to take your uh, mix and constantly run to all these different uh, audio environments to try to see how your sound is is going to hold up outside of your control room that was called the mix checker since that time they just released the mix checker pro and i wanted to check it out as soon as i saw it i jumped all over it because it's got some additional features that the mix checker did not have so let's just take a, a look at this so now again the basic um use for this and what's really really great about it is you put this as the last plugin on your inserts on your master bus and it gives you the ability to check your mix against different listening environments which they have emulated here now they did a really great job on the mix checker but the mix checker pro they did even a better job sampling to give it a more realistic um you know uh, uh you know uh, emulation if you will so what you can see across the top here is you can see you have three, we have six, uh, 12 different listening environments. Everything from um, seven inch studio monitor, something like, a, which, you know, is kind of like a Yamaha NS10 to like a PA speaker to, uh, you know, kind of a computer desktop speaker to a television set to laptops to iPads or tablets to phones and earbuds and headphones and cars and transistor radios and PA speakers. And we'll dive more into this in a minute. Okay, so this is really, really great that if you put this on your master bus and you wanna see how your mix is gonna hold up in different listening environments, what we've had to do currently to something like Mix Checker Pro here is you'd have to take your mix, burn it down to a CD or an MP3 file, put it on a flash drive or some kind of a CD um, and run it out to your car or a couple of different cars. Or you'll have to go plug, you know, put the CD into your computer or put the MP3 into a couple of different listening environments on your phone and check them with earbuds. And it becomes a real, you know, a real hassle takes up a lot of time. And what the Mix Checker Pro is, uh, is kind of trying to solve is that problem. So you can do it all right from the comfort of your control room. Now, I will say, depending on how you're listening to the mix checker or how you're listening to your mix, like right now I'm listening to them on really good studio quality headphones. If I wasn't recording this video, I'd be listening to them on my studio monitors. And depending on the monitor, monitoring system that you are using to listen to your mix through this plugin, the Mix Checker Pro will depend on, you know, there'll be a little bit of variation. So for example, um, if I'm using a set of say, you know, really high end Focal monitors in my studio to listen to the Mix Checker Pro, which has a really good flat response, and I go through these different emulations or these different uh, listening environments, that's gonna sound slightly different in my control room than if you were using like a really inexpensive pair of studio monitors, um, you know, brand doesn't really matter. Because, right, because the quality of that low-end speaker is going to have a little bit different of a frequency response in and of itself as compared to maybe a more higher-end um, set of monitors or headphones for that matter, okay? So there is a little bit of give and take. It's not going to sound exactly the same depending on the monitoring system you're listening to it through. But... In any event, regardless of that, you get a really good representation here of what your mix could sound like on different listening environments. So let's walk through the plugin. So the first thing I like that they did to this new plugin, which is different from the old one, is they give us the ability to change the size of the plugin GUI. So we can do everything from 75%, which is really kind of tiny. And if you're an old man like me that can't see very well, you can go all the way up to 200% right? Perfect. You can have it right on the screen in front of you, or you can go to 150, whatever you want to do. Okay. That's the first thing that's really handy. Second thing is I have this little wrench here and inside of here, you can check out the user manual. We can set the calibration, you can check for updates. You can go to Audified's website, um, you know, and some uh, things about the plugin itself. And if you want to check out the Audified uh, Mix Checker Pro, click the links in the, the description box below here and uh, it'll take you right out to the website and you can check it out. Um, and then we also have some presets where you can go ahead and you can set your own custom presets and we'll get into that in a second. And as you can see down here, I already created one called David Set and I'll show you what that means. But you can go everything from default, since when you go to say default mastering, it changes some of the listening environments. If you go to home devices, it's gonna change to standard things that you would find in the home. Typically you can see the icons have changed on the go is more mobile stuff, right? Phones, earbuds, tablets, transistor radios. Um, and then anything from like a solid low end is going to give you kind of like a PA system with a subwoofer, maybe a car with a subwoofer, that kind of a thing. So we'll start on the default. Okay. So that's what that's for. So you can create your own custom layout 
and you can dive into each one of these individually, which we'll take a look at in a second, and you can make your own preset. So when you call up the plugin, you have it set for the way you want. Over here, oh, that was our, that was a way to call up our presets. Okay, now we can also, um, we'll jump into the edit button in a second. Another thing that they added uh, to this plugin, which is great, is they added this noise button, which uh, it simulates some different noise from different uh, environments, everything from a street to a park, to a playground, to a station, like a train station, subway, bus, car, in a mall. Um, and what would you use this for? Well, if you're testing out, um, checking your mix on say, let's say earbuds, for example, you can add the noise and you can add the level of noise to kind of, again, to kind of emulate what it would be like if you were walking around on the street with your earbuds in and you were listening to your music and you have maybe, you know, cars going by or you're in a park or in a subway, you kind of get that, how is the mix going to hold up with the external noise that's coming around, which is a very useful tool. You know, you could turn it down and you could change the level of noise right here, All right, if you wanted to, which is kind of cool, okay? The auto button is going to allow us to cycle through all these different listening environments one at a time automatically, depending on how long we want it to be on any one particular environment. So we can play back the mix, set it up here, and then every, say you know, three, four seconds, it'll switch to the next listening environment to kind of do it automatically, which is kind of cool. If you wanted to do that, you turn the auto button on and off. You can bypass the plugin. So if you want to just kind of, you know, put it on your studio monitors here and then bypass it, you can just click bypass and that'll bring you right back to your listening environment. You can have the mix full down in mono, which is kind of cool, which will be useful for things like, um, again, if we're, uh, let's see, listening to this on a set of studio monitors here, this is like kind of a, a Yamaha NS10, and let's say you know they're kind of spread out, um, and we wanted to fold that to mono, we can just click the mono button. Then they also have this thing called distortion, which is gonna add a little bit of distortion to uh, these different listening environments. So for example, like something like on an iPad or a tablet, if you were to crank up the volume and listen to that on the tablet, those speakers are gonna distort a little bit, right? And so that's gonna kind of, again, kind of give you a little bit of, of distortion as well. So it kind of gives you a more realistic feel of what it's really going to sound like on a tablet. You understand? Pretty simple. Okay, so that's the basic layout of the front here. Um, and again, we can um, check the channel mode, mono, mono from the left side, from the light side, swap, those kinds of things, okay? Now, if we were to click on our first one here, just for example, and this again is the Studio 7-inch Vintage, which I guess is kind of like a Yamaha NS10, and then we go into the edit screen here, we can also now change this. So this happens to be the uh, th what's assigned to this first icon on the top left-hand corner is the uh, Vintage 7-inch uh, Studio. We click this drop-down, and there's a whole bunch of things that we can assign to it. So let's say we wanted that to not be the 7-inch uh, you know, Yamaha kind of a thing. We wanted it to be a different studio monitor. Maybe we wanted something like a Studio 4-inch Vintage, okay? And then we can save that as, and again, I can change the name, and I can save it to David Set 2, for example, um, and then we can put that in an empty slot, or we can put that inside of the David Set slot, and now it's successfully saved. And now when I come up here, you have the David uh, Set here, uh, and you can, and in there, you can now see that this is the four inch vintage, okay? It saved it on its own. If I go back to the default setting, this is gonna change back to the seven inch vintage, understand? Okay, so we can click on this, we can click on this, we can go to edit, and we can change what we want it to be. Now we can also have a custom label for each one of these things if we wanted to. We can also have, which is really cool, um, a stereo base. And like for this example, um, if we were to come over here on the seven inch studio setup, studio monitors, two monitors here, it automatically sets the uh, the stereo like 80% width, okay? Because that kind of emulates maybe like a control room or your home studio or your bedroom or however you have your speaker set up, one on the left, one on the right. But let's say we were doing something like a phone. Here's a five inch silver phone. Maybe it's kind of an iPhone. They set the stereo to 40%. But maybe something like an iPhone, if I wasn't listening to it on earbuds, maybe I'd want that to be all the way mono because it's like one little speaker, two little dopey speakers, right? You can customize this is what I'm trying to say to you. And you can save it as a preset so you can make it anything you want. So like on the uh, stereo earbuds, that's going to be 100% stereo because you have one in the left ear, one in the right ear. So you can control that on each individual um 
sound uh, simulation, which is great. You can also add the amount of dis uh, distortion that you want to have in there. You can add the volume in there as well. You can change the volume between the different sound sources if you choose to as well. So there's a lot of customization that you can do here, okay, which is great. So you can really get a feel for what this thing sounds like in different listening environments. And the way I typically use this without getting too crazy, because again, you could customize this thing to death if you really wanted to, but I just want to kind of keep it at its default setting for now. And I'm just wanting to hear during, you know, through these different listening environments, how does the mix hold up? Now, the point of this plugin is not to be able to try to make your mix sound perfect in every one of these listening environments because it won't, right? It never will. But it just kind of gives you an idea of what it's going to sound like. So when you're mixing and you're mixing, let's say for uh, yourself, you're mixing one of your songs. And if you know that most of the time you're going to be listening to this music on your earbuds or on your phone or on your tablet, and that's where it's going to be consumed the most, or you're going to put it up online on your website. And most times people are going to listen to their your music on their computer speakers. It's a good thing to kind of know that because if that's where the how it's going to be consumed the majority of the time, if you know that information, you can adjust your mix to compensate for that. So if you're listening to something on like an iPhone or stereo laptop speakers, maybe you're going to have a little bit more bass guitar. Maybe you're going to have a little bit more low end on the kick drum. Maybe you know that you're going to lose some of the bottom of the kick drum because on a on an iPhone or a tablet or a set of computer monitors, the speakers are really small. So maybe you want to enhance the click, that five, three to five K range to get the kick to pop through a little bit because you're not going to get the real low end. Understand? So Again, it's not intended for you to try to make it sound perfect in every listening environment. It won't, but it just gives you an indicator. So if we just kind of listen back to this quickly, we can just cycle through. We'll start with it off, and then I'll just kind of click through, and you can hear what the default settings kind of do for us. So here we go. It's still play out in the yard. Okay, so you can hear it sounds vastly different depending on the listening environment that we're choosing. But what's really cool is that, again, if you know that, you know, hey, most people are not going to listen to my mix on an iPhone that doesn't have headphones just out of the speakers themselves, then maybe you're not so concerned about that where on the earbuds it sounds a lot better. Now, depending on the style of music, like in this particular song, you know, it's a vocal track, right? So we have a vocal in there. want to make sure we can hear the lead vocal in all of these environments, obviously, right? want to make sure that we hear most of the instruments are pretty well balanced, again, the low end and the, and the real high end are going to vary from system to system, but again, it's just an indicator. Now, let me just demonstrate quickly here, like on the noise, what that would be useful for. So let's say we're using our, our, our earbuds here, and we wanted to add a little bit of noise in here, right? So... Okay, so you can kind of hear people, you know, kind of walking, right? You're at, you're out on a on a crowded street. You're in the city. You're in Manhattan, wherever. You got a lot of noise, a lot of cars going by. You can adjust this up or down to whatever you think is appropriate. You know, you want to make it so you can hear it come through the earbuds because that's realistically what it's going to kind of do. And then you kind of listen a little bit and see: does the mix fall apart? Does the noise really get in the way, or can we still hear the song? And and do we still have a pretty solid mix? Still play out in the yard Everybody knows who their neighbors are Just a dot on a map where the highway runs That's who I 
Okay, right, here's a playground with a bunch of kids playing in the background, right? I mean, this is really great. Great, great, great. I mean, they really thought of everything here. Here's a car, so if we go over to our car, here's what it kind of sounds like with the, with the rumble of the road noise, like if you're on a highway or whatnot, here's what our mix would sound like. Okay, now every car is gonna be a little bit different, depends on the car, the stereo system. Well, we can go into the edit mode, we can look at our sedan passenger, and we can say, you know, what kind of car do we wanna be in? We wanna be in like a, you know, like a, you know, a minivan, do we wanna be in a, in a kid, minivan kid, I'm not sure what that means, you know, minivan passenger van, a sedan, a co-driver, you know, if you're in a sedan and you're sitting on the passenger side, kind of what does it sound like? I mean, it's those kinds of things. So you can really get in here and you can really kind of, again, try to simulate where would this music be consumed and realistically how much noise is going on in the background and ultimately how does my mix hold up and do I need to make any changes to my mix? Um, if you were going through some of the more common listening environments and you found that the vocal was way too loud, then you may wanna tuck the vocal in the mix a little bit. Maybe it's a little too loud, you lower it in the mix. And in your control room, the vocals might be a little bit too much in the pocket for you. But you know when you go and listen to it on earbuds or in the car or on computer speakers where a lot of this uh, music is probably going to be consumed, if that were the case, the vocals sit just right and they're not too loud up front where they're not masking the rest of the instrumentation going on in the background. So that is the Mix Checker Pro in a nutshell. Again, if you have the Mix Checker, this is a nice step up because you get a lot of new additional features that you can use. If you've never had the Mix Checker, uh, and you don't have the Mix Checker Pro, click the link below in the description box. Go check it out. It is worth it because I'll tell you, it saves you a hell of a lot of time than having to put things on CDs and run all over the place to check your mix. You can do this very, very quickly. And it is, uh, you know, I use this all the time. I use the Mix Checker a lot. So I love this new Mix Checker Pro and I keep it as kind of my mixing template on my master bus. So it's always there. And again, at the end of the mix or during the course of my mix, I just check a few different things and just recalibrate my ears. I don't get too, too crazy with it. If everything sounds like like it's pretty well balanced in several different listening environments, then I know that when I take the mix out of the control room, no matter where it goes, it's going to sound like a great mix and it's not going to sound like something is way out of whack. So I hope you found this video helpful. Again, go check out the Mix Checker Pro. Once again, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com Get your five free mixing training courses. It's worth 110 bucks. I'm giving you five free training courses just for checking out homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And then also check out mixingmadeeasy.net, which is a mixing membership website that I have uh, to help you get better at the craft of mixing. If you're a beginner or an intermediate mi uh, mixer, whether you're a home recording musician, or even if you're an aspiring audio engineer, mixingmadeeasy.net is something you ought to absolutely check out. And we're gonna be giving away some free copies of the Mix Checker Pro to our members at mixingmadeeasy.net uh, as part of our monthly mixing contest. So go check out mixingmadeeasy.net if you don't know anything about it. And until the next uh, plug in review, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and mixingmadeeasy.net, and I will talk to you very soon. Take care.